So, party time. Yes. Hey, yo. Traveling. Romance. Midnight City or Cafe? Definitely party time. I, mean, hey, I don't remember if you said that in Hey Yo, though. Well, Hey Yo has sunglasses on. <laughs> okay. So that's party time during the day. the day. Oh. Yeah. What about Glow Only? Refreshing Sea or Super Red? Depends how angry. It's not red. It's okay. Super Red. I think we're going to do Color Theme. Party time? I, I say party time. Party time. All right. And with that, I'm Jordan. I'm Brian. And we're going to go sit in traffic in this, our first 2020. Yes. It's a 2020, not a 2019. I saw that. It's only May, and yet the 2020s are here. 2020 Kia Soul. So basically, we are the hamsters. Uh, yeah, so we're those guys uh, bouncing around in uh, sweatsuits, <laughs> track suits. Yeah, yeah we're, in the, we're in the track suits <laughs> and uh, and we're doing our thing. So, um, yeah, this is the third generation of the hamsters, though. Yes, this is the third generation hamster, uh, and uh, it's very good. Yeah, I mean, this is a this what we're in is the high it's trim level of all of them. If you look at it, it has like five different trim levels. So this is the big pimpin version. This is the GT line. 1.6 turbo, I think. Turbo, yeah. I think is what it's called. Which uh, is fine until you get to the end, and then it's not very catchy at the end. But GT line is okay. Well, I, I mean, I don't have, mind that. Did you look at the previous generation and what they had for naming conventions? The trim levels were like exclamation point and plus, and you're just like, I, I don't understand. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, <laughs> so, uh, uh, just to check, where am I going? Turn right? Sure. Where and then left? Go? I can see the highway there. There's traffic on it. Well, I, I, so if I we want to sit in traffic, there traffic. is uh, extremely large amount. See, you can see it's red. Yes. The traffic is red. Uh, I think red means bad. It's not green going that way, but it's red going to the right. It's less red than the car. Well, there's <laughs> nothing more red than this car. Um, it, is, it is very red. <laughs> I like the red. <laughs> I do, too. Inferno red. It's like... And, uh, and I like it a lot. And then they come in here, and there's red stitching, and there's more red stitching, and then... There's these red things, and then there's other red yeah. bits. Well, you know me, I'm I'm a sucker for red accents. Yeah, and well, down here's red. Yeah. And on the on the on the dash is red. I don't know if that actually changes oh. color with the car, but it just works out. If you're gonna buy this car, piece of advice: go on the configurator online and look at the color choices, because for all the five different trim levels, they all have their own different color options. So in this trim level, you can only get solid colors, but some of you some trims allow you to have the accenting or offset color roof. So you can do like the red with the black roof. Perfect. And I, I looked at it. I think the gold with the white roof is a winner. If I was 23, I would think this was really cool. And actually, I still think it's really cool. <laughs> yeah. I, um, yeah, I really like it. And it's got this one in the high trim. So it starts uh, at, at a lower amount, and then it rises up to a higher amount. And this is the higher amount. That's at, shocking. Yeah. It's right around 28,000. Um, yeah. Fully loaded. I think every box is checked on this thing. $28,710, including freight. Made in Korea. Made in Korea. Yes. Um, and, uh, and it's got all the things that you might want. as adaptive cruise, lane keeping assist, active lane keeping assist where it centers the car. Actually, it does a really good job. Um, it, it does blind spot monitoring, and it does auto emergency braking, and it's got a heads-up display. And it's got heated seats and knobs to change the temperature and a giant screen for CarPlay. And uh, what else? What am I? I mean, that's, it's got right. everything. So if you're 20-something and you want a car with an upgraded engine option, which is hard to find in the subcompact segment. Yeah. And you want all the things that you need, but none of the things that you don't, this is it. Yeah. Oh, auto high beams. Yeah. Which we just had a $42,000 Buick. That didn't have auto high beams. Auto windshield wipers. And, uh, and I'll tell you what, it looks really cool. It does. It looks really good. Um, the older ones, I actually just saw one drive by me uh, when I was eating lunch at a local fast food establishment. And the old one looked a little dated. Looked, didn't, didn't look great. Um, this one looks very good. Design-wise, interior and out. So they do have the contrasting roof now that has this like you know floating roof design, which is really popular nowadays. 
I think it works well depending on the color combination that you go with. The back, I don't know if I like the lights as much as I like the old ones, but still it's very recognizable as being a soul. Yes, um, and, and it's not... Kia has come a very long way, I have to say. Um, and this car has been out for uh, the years, several yeah. years, a lot of years. I don't know, some number of years. Uh, this how many? Yeah, that many years. And uh, <laughs> yeah, you just do it in the edit, it's fine. And should we go this way? Which let's way? go that way. Let's okay. go traffic. Yeah, this is, no one would ever do this. But we're going to be like, hey, let's go sit in traffic. Yeah, this Kia is actually one of my favorite car manufacturers today. I feel like they build solid vehicles all around, from the Stinger to the Sorento to the Soul. Yep. Uh, yeah. If you if you pretend that the Rio doesn't exist, uh, yeah, that's Kia that. makes really good <laughs> cars, top to bottom. Um, yeah, and and you know, so here's the thing. This is this is a little thing, but it drives me nuts that car companies can't get this right. So on the dash here, we have a digital speedometer which I like. You have the analog one too, but no one wants to look at that anymore because I got the digital one. Yeah. And it shows me all the information I want. It shows me how fast I'm going, what the cruise control is set to, my miles to empty, and the temperature. And check out... And that's it. It shows everything. And in the center stack, you have nav. You have this huge screen. Oh. It's like 72 inches wide. With all of... It's like 10.3 if we're counting. But... All the things that you want. You have your navigation, including your speed limit. You have what's playing, including album art and weather, all in one screen. Yeah, you got all this stuff here, and then you can like swipe across, and it's sort of iPad-y, and you can go in. And this is my favorite feature, though I haven't actually seen it happen yet. Is the sound mood lamp, mm. uh, which is apparently unavailable while driving. Which, fine, whatever. <laughs> but so you go in here, and you got all this stuff, and you, yeah, yeah, but you know, you put it on CarPlay, and you get this big thing, or. You can uh, you can go to the Kia screen, which actually isn't bad, and you get the, the, all that. It's perfect. You know what else it has? Knobs. It does. It has knobs. We're gonna we're gonna harp on this for a while. Um, actually, if you go into the settings, you can adjust what that knob does. Oh. And you can make it function not supported in Apple CarPlay. <laughs> but uh, there's two things. One, you can make it um, change the channel on the radio station, or you can make it like zoom in and out mm. on the nav map, which I don't know what you'd want to do. The nav map thing, but it's cool that you can reprogram it. Yeah. Um, and so they're they're sort of thinking outside the box here. And then I really like this. You go in here, and you can go to Google Maps, and it's huge. The map fills the whole screen. Yeah. It's like that's cool. Well, you like that landscape orientation because most manufacturers that are going to a infotainment of this size have it going to the portrait display. Yes. And I I. So if you do the portrait, you lose the knobs and the buttons. That you do. And I kind of like the knobs and the buttons, and I like this, and I think this is great. Well, and we've talked about this before. Knobs and buttons are important in January when you get in with gloves. Yes. And speaking of January, we have uh, heated seats. We have a heated steering wheel with the buttons over on the right side for some reason, so you can turn on my heated steering wheel when I'm not looking. Well, um, we have a drive mode. Sport. Now it's in sport. I don't know what sport does but it probably does some things. It changes the display, so I get a torque display. Oh. It tells me how many nanometers of torque I'm getting. That'd That's useful in America. Newton meters. Uh, no, it's nanometers. No, it's Newton meters, isn't it? <laughs> All right, so I have a button over here. Puts it in the sport, and uh, it shows me how many Newton meters of torque I'm currently generating. So right now, it's something like, uh, I don't know, 10 or 7 or something. Uh, 70. It's times, it says times 10. I don't know why it's showing me that. There's no, there's no need for that. But it, it moves, and it makes it look sporty. And it tells me the PSI of the... Yep. How come it doesn't show atmospheres? <laughs> it's going to show... It's mixed units right there. It's going to show but, Newton meters. Why right. doesn't it show... But PSI with Newton meters, I mean, this is mixed units. It's this just is, teaching us It's teaching us stuff. It's like mixing Greek and Latin roots. Why would you do that? Yeah. But it, it puts it in there. It's fine. Okay. Um, so your heated yeah. steering wheel only comes on the top trim level. A lot of this only comes on the top trim level. Heated seats comes in, you know, in the EX trim. Now, when we're talking about what model to buy, generally in Kia's lineup, EX is really where you, you get most of the equipment that you need, right? It is the value trim for the guys that want the creature comfort. And I think that's true in this as well. You do get the heated steering wheel, you keep the heated seats. But you do not get the thumping lights that match the beat of your song. You sure? 
Yeah, it's only in the GT line 1.6. That's sad. Yeah, I looked that's, it that's up. So clearly you have to buy this one. Yeah. Clearly. Well, look, the hamsters want thumping lights. <laughs> and that's <laughs> what the kids want. I, if, if I were 20-something and looking for a subcompact car with SCV-like utility, I mean, this thing is box. It is a hatchback. I mean, it's borderline hot hatch. This yeah, is... and I think actually that is something that we should note, is that this is like the only box remaining. Right. Because the Cube is dead. The Nissan Cube yeah. is gone. The uh, Honda Element yeah. is gone. And are there any others? Well, there's the, the, the Nissan, there's the NX200 whatever that they turned into the New York City taxi cab. But that doesn't really count. <laughs> But I think of like sort of the small boxy cars that you can fit lots of stuff in and fill it full of uh, stuff when you move out of your dorm. Yes, that's mostly what you're doing with this car. Uh, or IKEA. I bet oh, you see a lot of these at IKEA. I, I bet there's I bet there's a ton of these. It's a good IKEA car. Now, it's important to start talking about how they mark this as a young person car. But like so many other young person cars, there's a lot of old people buying this, and it has to do with the good seating position. You definitely sit higher off the ground. By old people, would. do you mean us? No, I mean like Act older than us. I, I mean like because we're not old. Boomers plus. Oh, very old. Okay. Yeah. Yes, actually, the woman who I saw today in the Soul that I thought the car looked kind of eh um, was an, an older but person. They appeal to the older people because you do have that slightly higher seating position, which is easy to get in and out of, but not so. Yeah, high it's sort of it's like crossover easy. almost, but yeah. it's not. It's not. Lots. It's very practical. Lots of cargo capacity. Yes. And for people on a fixed income budget. It's affordable. It is affordable. And you know something I really like that, that you don't get sort of in the car thing is the size of these windows. Yeah. They're enormous. And it sort of, it rakes back towards the back in kind of an evokey way, which I like. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's nice. I mean, you know, you get the sunroof and it's a little smaller. You know, if, if the sunroof ran all the way back, this car would cost $8,000 more. I do wish it had that, but... I mean, the panoramic that's just sunroof nit, That's is, just nitpicking. Yeah, and that's mostly when you have rear passengers you want, you know, comfort for... Honestly, this is not a car you buy if you have rear passengers. But I think the people who buy this car are not those with families anyways. You could pick someone up at the airport in this. Yes. I think there's, there's enough room. Maybe not for a ton of luggage. Cause, but that's an occasional you know, but yeah, That's not a, you know, you you're not hauling kids every day. No. If, it's a great commuter car, I think. Yeah, in, especially in this Because it does the lane trim. keep and it does the, you know, so we're an adaptive cruise and it's, you know, keep us behind this car. this trim. Because you have to go to the top of trim to get the adaptive cruise. That is an excellent commuter car. I could live happily on this on a daily basis. Maybe you'll get one. Maybe. You look great as a hamster. <laughs> I'm not. I don't know what the facial hair over there. You got yeah, more of the jerk. Um, there's another a stupid thing that I like is the start stop button. It's down here. Which is like it's a silly thing. Yeah. But I kind of like it down there. It's it's a little different. That's like a Audi does that. Well, that, that's definitely a reason to buy the car. Yeah. <laughs> so. Don't hate. I hate. Haters going to hate. You know, the old version of this car did come with a panoramic roof, right? And I think one of the reasons they got rid of it is you hear a lot about they wanted to increase the stiffness of the frame, the torsional rigidity, and that really required getting rid of that roof. Yeah, sunroofs, cutting holes in the roofs of things tends to compromise their integrity a little bit. Yeah. What are you going to do? I will say the fit and finish of this, soft touch on the dash. Yep, you don't feels see very that nice. Very, very often. Um, I do like I the like color this, accent. This thing is, I like that. I don't know what it is, but sure. I think there's actually lights in there. Smart cruise control canceled. Oh, so it doesn't come to a complete stop. Oh, that's kind of annoying. That's more than All right, whatever. I'm disappointed eh, by that. We're disappointed. All right, well, okay. $28,000. How many more dollars do I have to put in to get a uh, full start-stop cruise control Kia? And, and yeah, right. We'll find out. <laughs> You're like, oh, we're really disappointed. Whatever. Let's see. Does it resume yet? No. Man. Oh, yeah, it did. It did resume. Okay. Exciting. So it won't come to a stop. That's all right. Let's see. This Wireless trip. charging, too. Yes, it does have, so you can put it up here, uh, where all the plugs are for the cameras right now, but you can put it in there, um, which is cool. I like that. Um, I think that's another GT line 1.6 whatever feature, mm. um, is you get the wireless charging. You get a bunch of plugs. You get a USB port there. You get another USB port that charges off the battery. 
um, and then a couple more elsewhere. So you can plug in all your all your gadgets. Smart cruise control cancel that. Mm. Mm. <laughs> strike. It's a strike against your Kia. It's all right. That, that it's, would get annoying in traffic. It, uh, yeah, it would. <laughs> all right, whatever. <laughs> yeah. So this, the cargo capacity of this vehicle, it's pretty good. It's like compact SUV territory. Yeah, it's definitely, if you look at the stuff that this might compete against, um, I think probably the closest is maybe the Honda Fit. It's probably the nearest. Yeah. I mean, maybe only competitor for something like this? Because, like... You know, if you start thinking what people cross these against, I bet, like, the Subaru Crosstrek shows up. Um, it, that's in the same generic price point. There's, a, there's a Scion XB over there, another cube car that's dead. Yeah. Which is disappointing, because that was a good car, too. I mean, I'm trying to think of what you... And I bet this does compete against a lot of the subcompact, compact sedans just because of the price point. But this gives so much more utility. For all you people who, you know, were like, oh, well, my friend drives a Corolla a and my right other there. friend drives a Civic, this is what you buy to look better. Yes. It's, and it, and then you're a hamster. So I was actually looking up the, the ad campaign. That, that one automotive ad of the year in 2012. I'm the hamster ad campaign. Right. And we're still talking about it. So seven years later. And not only are we talking about it, most people, not most, probably a good number of people will actually remember what car it was for. I bet they would. Which is, that's exceptionally impressive. Yeah. It, it definitely made the, the brand of this vehicle. And yeah. I'm, and it, it's, you know, well, seven or whatever, however many years later, we're still here. So that's that's pretty good. Um, yeah. I don't know what else there is to say about it. Acceleration is acceptable in this line. Let's not accelerate to them, but let's test the automatic emergency braking, boys. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, and so uh, the acceleration is good. It's very sporty. I mean, it's not going to win a drag race or anything, but like, if you, the wheels are way out at the edge, so it's sort of got a, a mini um, go kart sort of thing. Its steering is really tight and nice, and and things. I mean, it's at the end of the day, it's a twenty-eight thousand dollar car, so it's not going to be crazy. But like teenage me would have been thrilled to have this car and to like zoom around in it. And then it's got all the safety stuff too and airbags everywhere and all the things that you want. I remember Teenage U. Teenage U would have gotten into all sorts of trouble with this car. Probably. Um, not least of which because it's red. Yeah. But, you know. Well, okay, if you're going to get it in this trim of the colors, it's the red or the blue. For sure. Hands down. They are pretty. I like it. Um, it's a lot better than that baby poop green brown that that Subaru Outback is. Not, not the best. There is a green, actually, a, in the color configurator. Would not be on top of my list. Yeah. But that's why you can go in there. You can choose different things and find what you like. There are so many different ways to build this vehicle. It almost begs to be custom ordered. That or shop dealer lots for the whole region and pull one in. Yeah, and I think that's sort of the point, right? Because they want to appeal to people who sort of want to have their own thing. Their own look. And the more customization you give, the better off you end up. And that's why you can go in there and do the, the party mode and the hey yo and all the different yeah. different color schemes. And it's not like you have a lot of equipment options. I don't want to give that sense, but it's because they have the five trim lines and every trim line has its own depth of colors. It's like you go into the Crayola box and what do you want? Dump out all the things. <laughs> ah, find, a, find, a, find a crayon. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I like that. And it doesn't seem like there's too many, you know, some, some car makers will just have a million different options to choose from. Um, and this, it's pretty straightforward. It's like, well, okay, how much do you want to spend? And here's what you get. And and that's that. And I think they're all, they all sort of make sense. For people who want to go to the bottom barrel of, you know, 17, 18 grand for the car, it comes with a manual. You don't see that Ooh. very often anymore. Actually, to save money manual, too. Yeah, like an anti-theft device manual. Whereas this has a, a some number of gears, dual clutch. I think it's seven. Seven? Yeah. So this car does come with three different transmission op options. Most of you will end up with the CVT, continuous variable transmission, but on the very base, you get the manual, and this has the seven-speed dual clutch. Which I've been driving around for uh, a little while now, and actually, it's really good. Have you tried the paddle shifters? Uh, I did, they are uh, terrible. <laughs> Don't use them. They're there. I mean, you can, you can do it, and they, like, it actually warns that it's a little jerky at low speeds. Yeah. The dual clutch. So it's like, okay, fine. But it's, yeah, just leave it in D. <laughs> Sport, D, call it a day. Yeah. Um, apparently, this car has higher rollover risk 
to avoid avoid abrupt maneuvers and excessive speed, always buckle up. And it shows a giant van flipping over. Yeah, I'm not terribly concerned about that. I don't think so, no. Uh, and so one nice thing about this large, more powerful engine that you do get on the upper trim, you only lose one mile per gallon. It's really not bad. I would imagine you do have to go to premium fuel because it's a, it's a turbonium. We'll put that up here. I don't know if that's true. Does it say premium required? Uh, not here, but I, I don't know. Next time we stop, jump out and look at the other things. Uh, I don't know what else there is to get into. So you got this. You got two cup holders. You got this bin for your phone. You yeah. got a, a wireless chargey thing here, like a little place to put stuff. It has stuff. 17 fewer cup holders than the Super Recent. I think that's probably wrong. I think it's cup holders in the back? I, I would guess there's cup holders in the back. Mm, we probably do have some of the flip down center console. Which actually, I think cup holders in the center console is one of the options I thought that you get on a higher trip. Yeah, see? More cup holders. That's worth $10,000. <laughs> oh, yeah. You got you got speakers. You got more speakers. You got speakers everywhere. That's important because for the youths. You got uh, lights. You got a sunglass holder. It's got some kind of a connect system here. And if you press the button, it says, would you like to activate it? Because it's a press car and it's not activated. We don't want to do that. But um, it's got the U Uvo system. I don't know what Uvo is. But Does it have a stash compartment for my weed? I'm sure it has several. <laughs> We're in Massachusetts. It's legal here. So what do you need to stash it for? In case you're at the airport and uh, well, that's what up here is, yeah. right? Isn't that weird? It probably gets hot up there. Yeah, I bet it does. I don't know. I did have gummies melt on me once. That's that like, that really what, bummed me what, out. It's like, what do you need to stash it for? Like, have you never driven down the road and been 100 miles from the border and found that border patrols for some reason stopping cars? Never had that. Really? No, I, not, not for me. I have. Well. Northern New Hampshire, 100 they, miles from the border. Did they find your weed? They did not. Excellent. Yeah. Good job, border <laughs> patrol. Well, they... they Yes, they made some people angry. I don't think they were looking for you. Um, yeah. Kia Soul. So finally, all my friends that make fun of me for being a ginger without a soul are going to be like, boom! Oh. Got a soul now. <laughs> oh, soul yeah. Soul time. You got a line of them as a soul train? It could be. Maybe that's how they get them to the boats in like Korea. Soul train? Like a soul train? Oh. <laughs> this could go so bad. We're going to just have all the terrible jokes. All right, here's a question. Would you rather have this car or the Mini Cooper? This car, it's about $10,000 less easily. Yep. And I... What did I do? Blind spot, apparently. Okay. Um, yeah, it's less money, and I suspect better reliability. Oh, for sure. I mean, Kia is actually very reliable car. Yeah, and it's got the super warranty. It does a 100,000 mile powertrain warranty. That's a lot of miles. Yeah, it's, your warranty is probably almost as long as your student loans. Yeah. I can dig it. And it's a city car. It's easy to park. I like that part. It's a super important point, actually. And I think that's one of our biggest mistakes is taking this on the highway. Because I'm going to be honest. I don't know that this is a commuter car for a lot of people. I think this is a, I take the subway to work, and this is my car to go grocery shop on, on the weekends kind of car. Could be. I think it depends on where you live. True. If you, I, I think a lot of people, if you can take the subway to work, you just wouldn't have a car. And you would get this from, like, Zipcar or something. I bet they do have a lot of those. Yep. I bet this is super popular with Zipcar because you can haul junk in the back. Maybe a good Uber car. Because you, so I drove for Uber for a while last year to uh, do some research and make some money and things. I bet the Friday and Saturday night kids would really like the blinking lights to the music. I'm sure they would. I think they would like that. I don't know why that would. Why wouldn't you like? Why doesn't every car have that? I remember 10 years ago the Mini had accent lights and there was a little button down here and you could hold it and it would cycle through all the different colors you get. So if you're like, I'm in a red mood, you could hold it down until it well, changed I to red. I believe you can set the color, what mood you feel like. Yeah, but why doesn't every car have that? Because I Like, that's an easy thing to it. add. Sure you would. You're blue all the time. <laughs> you're like, oh, I'm in a bad mood. My wife was mean to me. I gotta go into blue mode. Uh, that would be days that end in Y. Yeah, so just <laughs> leave it in blue. <laughs> 
But then when she gets in the car, she's like, ah, red. Red, yeah, uh, red. anger. <laughs> yeah, so, but, you know, I like that. You get to accent the car. That's cool. Yeah. I had a Mercedes S-Class that had that, and it had two different scents that you could pick from depending on your mood. Scents? Scents, like smells. Like, do you have to reload this? Oh, yes. Yeah, they had, there were the two things in the glove box, two little bottles of perfume. And it would pipe them through the system to make the car smell better. Well, that's clearly important. It was important. It that made the car smell really nice. I gotta I be honest. It does. It's a really nice feature. Um, but you can only get that at the ninety-six thousand and up price point. You can buy five of these for that. Well, four. You could buy a lot. Almost of these. four. Yeah, if you're not driving in snow all the time, I would buy this over an SUV. Even so, you could put winter tires on it. Yeah. Well, as you should for no matter what you buy. If, if, you if live, it gets cold. If you live in real New England, and I don't mean you, Connecticut, sorry, you're out. The rest of New England? Well, really, anywhere, the, the dividing line is kind of, if, it's, if it stays below 45 degrees for a good chunk of the year, you should have winter tires in your car. Okay. That's the, that's the rule that I've heard from all the, the car com- or tire companies um, pretty much uniformly. Yeah. 45 degrees, put winter tires in your car. Which... Which yeah, that sounds about right. Here in New England, that's like Thanksgiving till April 1st. Yeah, ish. something like that. Yep. Uh, Look, auto windshield wipers, they're going. It works. I mean, you know, this part of the reason why we're maybe at a bit of a loss of things to say after 20 minutes about this car is that it really is just it's really simplistic good car. mechanically, right? It does. There's no real complaints about it. I haven't. Well, aside from... The adaptive cruise cutting out at low speeds. Yeah, that's annoying. Which is annoying, but not a deal breaker. Um, because generally, when you're in traffic like this, you don't really cut. They call it stop and go traffic, but you don't really come to a stop. You come to like a four miles an hour, and then you go again. And and then it's fine. Um, but honestly, if that's the biggest complaint I can find about this, we're doing pretty good. Yeah. That's because they didn't give it to you in the gold color. Well, then I would complain about the gold. I thought you liked the gold. I do like the gold with the white contrast roof. And I know this is crazy town, but I feel like you get the gold body, then you have that black bar that kind of separates them, and then the white floating roof looks sharp. The gold, you know, gold on gold, not sharp. Looks gaudy. I don't know. All right. This is why my wife doesn't let me pick paint colors at home. Yeah, what color is your new Volvo? Uh, again, she picked that out. Black. On black. Black on black. black. On black with... with- is it the lava uh, interior? No, no. Black, black interior. Black on black on black. It's with the red leather seats. The sure. oxide red leather. Another car sort of aimed at the millennial types. Which is most often bought by old people. Well, it Not shows many. what the marketing department of car makers knows. That millennials don't buy Volvos? Or, I don't know, do they <laughs> buy Souls? I think they buy Souls. They do buy Souls. Um, I think well-to-do millennial. You're a well-to-do millennial. I've been accused of worse. Yeah. As much much to my chagrin, Pew Research says that a millennial started in 1981. Yeah, I know. I qualify. I have a strong disagreement with them. My uh, deciding line for millennials is whether you can remember a time before the internet. I think that's mm. a good. I think that's a good cutoff because that would have been like '96, is when AOL went to everybody. You were late to the game. Well, I remember the internet from before that, but... I definitely remember the internet from before 96. No, but that was when it went to everybody. Well, my father was a nerd, as was yours. We had internet... Yeah, but that, that, I don't mean us. I mean normal people. But that then were millennials. Do you... We, shh, stop! <laughs> Do you remember going to the library and looking through the little paper index to find books? I remember them in school telling me that I should, but I remember the town library had the terminal you know server with the, the, the you're not helping army. me no. explain how we're not millennials I, I, this is very I upsetting we right are. Now. this is very upsetting all right fine and that's why we like the kia soul buy one you're all set like subscribe leave a comment all those good things uh and uh we're gonna sit in traffic some more because we're not escaping this ever yeah no we're gonna be here forever i mean it's i can see the reds there's reds and yellows there's all the colors of the rainbow except green which means no traffic yeah well you know Welcome to 5.20 p.m. Yeah, why do we... Yeah, I'm out of here. Okay. All right, bye. Bye-bye. Ran out of things to talk about. I know. I'm, I'm sorry. I, mean, it, I don't know what to say. This car is really good. I, well, you know, it, 
We'll have to think about. We don't have anything to complain about.